Scarlet Blaze. Bridge of Betrayal. The Empire achieves early success in the war thanks to House Gloucester, a noble alliance house whose vows of allegiance and safe passage were key to the quick capture of Garrig Mach. But Count Gloucester breaks his oath and turns on Burglies' troops, trapped in hostile territory with their supply routes severed. The Imperial Army's outlook appears bleak. I fear I may have miscalculated, my son. How can that be possible, Father? We have the enemy surrounded. Yes, and they have yet to give a damn. Time grows short, and soon Edelgard's reinforcements will descend upon the Alliance. Then we will hold them off at the Great Bridge. And they will find another way. If they manage to take even one of the Aramid River's crossings, they can break through our ranks. And while that may not spell immediate defeat, it will dash any hopes of Count Burglies' surrender. Eventually, Edelgard's army will wash over the land, and then, my son, we will be defeated. Speak plain, Father, I beg of you. What does this mean for House Gloucester? Do not fret, Lawrence. This was a leap of faith we had to take to better our territory's fortunes. When Claude came to me with this offer, I determined the reward to be worth the risk. If the gamut fails, so be it. All it means is that our house will have to swear allegiance to the Empire. Edelgard will never settle for such. She will demand... Oh, Father. No. I am proud of you, my son. You have grown into a man strong and wise enough to lead our house. Is there nothing that can be done? What of your dream to claim the Alliance leadership from House Regan? It is your house now. You determine our path. Besides, when the dust finally settles from this war, there may not be an Alliance to lead. So I am to submit to the Empire and carve out as big a place for our family as I can? Is that it? You would have me put an end to the Leicester Alliance? Perhaps my praise of your wisdom was ill-advised. You get ahead of yourself, Lawrence. We bend the knee only if we lose, not before. And as you said, we may yet be able to drive back the Emperor's reinforcements and win the day. Always think two steps ahead, my son. Be clever. Survive. That is the lesson I seek to impart. Oh. I had best go prepare for my final battle as Count Gloucester. However this plays out, Look for a way for our house to prosper, and seize it, Lawrence. Seize it! That is how Irvin Fritz Gloucester fights, and it is how you must fight as well. Well, we managed to slog our way to the encampment. Now we just have to finalize our plan. Why is it so important to hold part of the Aramid Riverbank again? I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to cross over into Alliance territory before it's too late? If we do, we risk the enemy cutting off our retreat. We are here to break their siege, not fall prey to one. If we don't conduct this rescue carefully, we'll be worse off than we started. We must be smart. And that means establishing at least one bridgehead in addition to the Great Bridge of Murden. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. The Minister is a general of much endurance. He will be holding out until we arrive. He is more than a warrior and a maker of strategies. It would lack wisdom to be making an enemy of him. Yep, that's my father. No one can beat him. I just hope I can be half the warrior he is one day. 
I think even one and a half Bergwieses would be more than enough. Not that it's any of my business. So, what are we to do about House Gloucester? They have indicated a willingness to swear fealty, for whatever that pittance of a promise is worth. That leaves only Phlegathon and Ordelia. And I doubt very much that anyone would take us to task for dismantling them. The head of House Ordelia is one of the five great lords. Dismantling them, as you say, would hamper Her Majesty's ability to rule effectively in the future. Consider, for example, why we chose not to dismantle House Iyer. Because I belong to House Iyer, and you did not have to. Ah, of course. You are happy so long as they install successors who are willing to toe the line. That is the plan, yes. House Phlegathon, however, must be disposed of. Their lord, Acheron, has leveraged his control of the Great Bridge to do whatever he well pleases. I have a suspicion the Alliance desires him gone as badly as we do. Lawrence Gloucester and Lysithia von Ordelia were Her Majesty's schoolmates, yes? They may be more willing to listen to reason than the others. Sure, but Claude went to the Officer's Academy too. And he's taken a firm stance against the Empire. Do you really think this can be handled via diplomacy? That will depend on precisely what their demands are. But first, we must retake the Great Bridge and extricate Count Burgles and his troops. Let us focus our energies on that for the time being. Agreed. And it would behoove us all not to overlook how devious Claude can be just because we went to the Academy together. If he's not willing to come to the table, I won't hesitate to meet him on the battlefield instead. I won't hold back either. Sometimes you have to kill old friends in this line of work. That's just how it is. My instruction comes at a high price. Thank you. 
Don't neglect your daily studies. Hunger is the true enemy. This is great. I bet anyone would love this stuff. Wait, for me? Great. I love this stuff. Oh, but this is just to die for. It's my favorite. Really? Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy. Yeah, the flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. Oh, this looks great. I'm gonna demolish this puppy for sure. This surprise pleases me. How did you know I would have enjoyment of this? Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy. Yeah, the flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. No. Did you really? Oh, you did. This is my absolute favorite. Thank you. How did you know this was my favorite? I thank you deeply. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy.
Solid, solid. How did you know I like this? Uh, yes, well, I admire people who show such consideration. Oh, yes, <laughs> this is definitely one of the foods I love. Come back whenever you're hungry. Ah, fiery as ever. What an inspiring sight. Oh, hey, Ferdinand. You think so? The way I see it, a mercenary who doesn't train every day probably won't stay a merc for long. Hmm, I cannot dispute your logic. Though, I must say, you never did strike me as a typical mercenary. And your upward trajectory has proven me right. To go from nothing to a commander rivaling even the finest of nobles as quickly as you have is astounding. You are the most intriguing woman. Well, that's because I've made a habit of giving my all. I'm honestly just happy to have earned Edelgard's respect. You're all, you say? Something wrong? To the contrary! I find your attitude inspirational! We are birds of a feather, you and I. Every task I undertake must also be done to utmost perfection. Polishing my armor? It shall have a mirror sheen! Cooking a meal? Let not even a single ingredient go to waste. True nobility means surmounting any challenge before you with no less than every fiber of your being. Uh, that's taking it a little far, don't you think? Maybe you're not wasting food, but what about your time and energy? And I'm not any sort of noble, you know. I am aghast! Are you suggesting that devoting myself fully to every endeavor is wasteful? I mean, yeah. If you put your all into every little thing, you'll run out of stamina right when you need it most. You're like the knight in that proverb, the one who spends all day building a fence around his pegasus, only for it to fly away. Valuable advice for a pegasus, perhaps, but I am no beast. I am Ferdinand von Eyre. I know that you're different. I do. But everyone needs to take it easy sometimes. If you always keep your bowstring taut, it's just gonna snap when you actually need to fire. I assure you, I am no bowstring either. But I take your point. However, there is no cause for concern. As I have told you on multiple occasions, I am Ferdinand von Eyre. Whether I am resting, enjoying leisurely pursuits, or simply in contemplation, I always apply all my energy to the task at hand. At work or at rest, I will forever give it my all. <laughs> Seriously? What's full on resting even look like? company smack dab in the middle of the imperial capital huh i can't even begin to imagine what that must be like i mean i've been all over the place for my mercenary work but it's mostly just been for small time rural lords and the like honestly i'd never even met anyone from the big cities like enbar or ferdiad before coming to garrig mock even after I ended up in the capital, all the glitz and glamour made me feel almost like I was living someone else's life instead of my own. You know, shows in the capital are about a thousand times flashier than the little town festival shows you might be used to. Every important moment of the drama is conveyed through elaborate song, and at the center of the musical ensemble stands its star, the diva. I think I get the idea. These divas sound pretty incredible. 
They probably get stage names and everything if they're that important, huh? Oh, but of course. I was known as the Mystical Songstress. Hey, that's pretty good. There always has been this kind of indescribable aura surrounding you. Thanks, but I have mixed feelings about the name myself. They called me that because of how suddenly a street orphan like me was discovered and debuted. Yeah, I see how there could be some complicated feelings wrapped up in that. But if you were able to rise from that to D.Va, you must have the chops to back it up. Not that I can even picture what that would sound like. Hey, do you think you could sing something for me? Uh, since you asked so nicely, but I'm only doing it this once, okay? How the crimson rain of pain it came, falling hard upon a land of flame, when the sacred blade it split the sky until the heavens heard our cry. In the hour of vengeance, will you heed the call? On the red fields of revenge, will you help avenge? We must fight strong and stand tall. Well, what did you think? It was... Uh, yeah. What? You didn't like it? Not quite the booming applause I'm used to. No, it was incredible, honest. I was just kind of at a loss for words for a second there. That was like nothing else I've ever heard before. Sorry I can't really give you much more than that. Oh, don't worry about it. This sort of thing happens more often than you'd think. Well, as long as you're not mad. If you don't mind, though, maybe you could try again for me sometime? I'd really like to hear you sing some more. And hey, I might even get better at telling you what I thought. <laughs> sure. I suppose I can give you one more chance. Hey, Manuela. Hmm. She must be out. Did I hear something? Oh, wait, is she sleeping in one of the patient beds? Oh, you. So silly. <laughs> she's smiling. I wonder what she's dreaming about. Wait, don't go. So you're just gonna leave? Uh-oh, now she's scowling. Looks like things are going downhill fast. Get back here! You'll regret this! You hear me? I'll never forget! <gasps> Morning, Manuela. Oh my, I don't even remember falling asleep. I don't suppose I was talking in my sleep, was I? You said something about someone leaving, like, don't go. Yeah, that's what happened in the dream. I thought I'd found the one. But in the end, he cast me aside. Just thinking about it makes me furious. How is it that even in my dreams I am hopelessly single? Oh, I, uh, I need a, a moment. Are you okay? I'm sorry, but... Uh, could I uh, trouble you for a glass of water? Phew, that is much better. Thank you. You got it. But, uh, it smells like you've been swimming in booze. Are you hungover? I might be. Is that a problem? Well, I don't think the infirmary is supposed to look like a bear charged through here. That seems like a problem to me. Back 
take off, will you? You're the one who trounced in here unannounced and eavesdropped on my private, if humiliating, sleep talking. And now you're attacking me for a tiny hangover in a messy room? Who do you think you are? My mother-in-law? What? No. But as your friend and comrade, I can't not say anything. I know, you're right. I'm sorry. I tend to fly off the handle when I'm embarrassed. Hey, can I ask you for one teensy favor? Let me guess, you want help getting this place cleaned up, right? I suppose I could lend you a hand. No, no, not that. Would you be a dear and pretend like you didn't see any of this? Ah, gotcha. Don't worry, I won't say a word. You're a class act. Thank you. Well, I don't want everyone to think worse of me than they already do. I mean, honestly, where did it all go wrong? Did you know I was once a diva with a middle franc opera company? But now, apparently I'm just a shadow of my former self. Can you believe how rude that is? Why would you kick a girl when she's down? What? But I didn't... How about this? In lieu of hush money for our little secret, perhaps I'll let you hear me sing next time. I'll show you that this diva's just as dazzling as ever. Now you have something to look forward to. Anyway, did you need something? Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm sure I had a reason to come in here, but now I don't have the slightest idea why. Training can be the difference between victory and defeat. Another tool in the belt. I need more strength than this. This is quite fascinating. I work to grow. This is part of me now. I must make the most of this ability. more strength than this. This is quite fascinating. 
a useful skill. Prowess means nothing without resolve. serve me in the times to come. This is quite fascinating. This should come in handy. This is part of me now. Oh, look at that. Power will serve me in the times to come. This is quite fascinating. Hey, a new power! All right. Who knew this power slept within? This should come in handy. Hey, anything that makes me stronger. I'll surely put this to good use. I imagine this will serve me. Time to work you into shape. With proper training, you'll be unstoppable. Which battlefield are you headed to? Send a flower to battle, and watch it bloom. Have to do my best. Let's earn our keep. We can't af- I'll do my best. I'm a little nervous about this. Leave this one to me. That's my cue. Oh, if I must. Leave this to me. For to lose anyone here. Hurry! You would fight even though we're at a disadvantage? Oh, fine. I beg your assistance at once! <laughs> We've got a friend. Strongholds out! 
can't take my eyes off. Not a problem. I'm here to help. You want to fight? Leave this to me. Sorry, but I gotta fall back. Wounds are severe. I have to fall back. I've got to walk through the <laughs> battlefield. This place won't be a 
problem anymore. I'm gonna stop it. You know, perhaps I really am curious about your power. Getting out of fights alive is kind of my thing. I won't let myself stop here. I'm getting better. What did your investigation uncover, Hubert? It appears those who slither in the dark had nothing to do with any of this. This plot was hatched by Houses Regan and Gloucester alone. In other words, we know exactly where the idea to encircle our troops came from. Claude Von Regan, leader of the Alliance. He is going to be a true thorn in our side now that he is in charge. Back when Duke Regan had no clear heir, the Lords were busy maneuvering to be next in line. Then Claude appeared in an instant and laid claim to the seat of power. We were hoping that would be enough to throw the Alliance into disarray, but he has done a remarkable job of seizing the reins. Feigning discord with Gloucester while they privately schemed together was an especially nice touch. Sadly, it seems we're facing a gifted tactician as well as a skilled leader. Yet for a tactician, he woefully underestimated Count Burgley's. I say we finish his education. It is time Claude learns the gulf between his power and the Empire's cannot be bridged with a few clever tricks. Allow me to assist with any matters regarding the facilities. If I may be of further service. What to do? Do you have a moment?
so basically... Mm hmm You'd like to go for a ride? Very well. It's always important to take a break every now and again. Of course, I have some time on my hands. If I knew it was going to be this relaxing, I would have brought Her Majesty along. Fighting inland for too long makes me miss the sea near my home. I used to love swimming there. My wish for the future is that Her Majesty will unify Fodlin, enact reforms, and make her dream a reality. Leave it to me. I know Hubert is capable, but his attitude leaves much to be desired. Ah, that was time well spent. Let us do it again sometime. Looks like I'm not the first one to show up. Hello there. No need to pay me any mind. I'll just be absorbed in my book here. I assume you've come to meet someone? As they've clearly not arrived yet, why don't you join me? Here. I, uh... Thanks. Hey, Linhart, you're into all that spooky magic stuff, right? Like sorcery and crests and whatnot? Yes. Why? Is there something you'd like to ask me? Oh, no. I was just thinking it's kind of weird that you've never really been interested in my power. Do you want me to be? Yeah, I mean, I don't even understand it myself. But with you helping me, I might actually learn something. That and Hubert scared me half to death talking about how you might experiment on me. Just so we're clear, I'm not into that. Uh-huh. Well, not everything piques my interest. Your circumstances simply do not. If you're not interested, then so be it. But is there any particular reason why? Hard to say. Perhaps because a sword is the only thing you're able to manifest? Strictly speaking, I suppose your power does raise some questions. But that sinister weapon of yours, it just doesn't leave me all that interested in learning more. Sinister, huh? That's one way to describe it. Tell me, have you ever beheld one of the hero's relics? They also possess the most peculiar aura. And yet, there's something almost divine about the terror they instill. But your sword? It's cold. Maybe even inhuman. In more complex terms, it's little more than an inorganic, dispassionate construct. Not a hint of the goddess's divine guidance in its design. 
It's not as if you were able to choose what you manifested, right? It just came to you. True. But what if I could turn it into something else and start manifesting different things? Would you be interested then? Is such a thing possible? I would like to see that for myself, I must admit. In fact, I'd be quite excited by that. What a fascinating topic to lay at my feet. Hold your horses there. I'm not really sure I've laid anything anywhere just yet. But aren't you the one who brought it up? Thank <laughs> you. 